Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle, getting out there, adventuring in the outdoors. Today we're gonna be talking about a budget platform system I've designed up for the 4Runner, but knowing the dimensions of most of the off-roading SUVs you all are probably using, even maybe the bed of a Tacoma, I think this might be an awesome video for you. So watch through the bulk of the video because I'm throwing out little tidbits of ideas throughout the whole video, uh, kind of explaining different ways that you could tweak this setup for just about any vehicle. So uh, definitely watch and uh, you know, you can totally change this design. It's not like, you know, this is a set in stone design. I've designed this to be really modular. I'm trying to do this for daily driving so I can pull out a lot of things if I need to go to the hardware store or I can leave certain things in. I can run a solo setup or a rooftop tent setup. Uh, I think this is a really universal setup and uh, most of it you can buy off the shelf and I'm gonna try and link as much as I can down below to kind of help you all out. And uh, yeah, hopefully this can uh, be super informative and uh, entertaining for you all because I think this is a pretty sweet setup. So um, if you have any questions about it or you're just wanting to know a little bit more why I chose to switch to this sort of setup, uh, feel free to comment down below. Uh, but that being said, we're going to talk about some of the products used within the setup first, and then we'll jump in to actually installing them on the vehicle. I'll kind of show you how the setup all works. So thank you so much for supporting me. Let's jump right into the video. Hey everyone. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about this new fridge from Iceco. They recently sent this to me. It's actually not that new. It's a new fridge to me, but it's not like they just released it. I really like these because I just think they're a super durable design. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about them. So we've got the fridge, we've got a slide, and we've got a cover, but let's first unbox the fridge. Alrighty, well here is the fridge. If you can see on this side, it's pretty clean. So the one thing that you'll probably notice here is this fridge looks a fair amount like my set power one. And that is true. I think there's a lot of similarities between the two, but uh, I really like this one, and Iceco uses Dan Foss compressors, which are a little bit of a higher end product, and they're kind of the workhorse of the refrigerator. So the other thing I really like about this is all the dark kind of muted colors. So this is kind of like a grayish, greenish blue color, um, primarily gray though, and then everything else is basically black. We've got these nice metal latches, we've got metal hinges on the back. So if you look back here, we've got these nice metal hinges right here and here. And then on the sides, we've got these metal spring handles that are screwed into the actual fridge itself. And overall, I just think it's a really nice product. So uh, we've got the battery protection buttons over here for high, medium, and low. And then we've got the max min. You set your temperature, yada, yada. You've probably seen fridge videos on this stuff before, so I don't necessarily need to walk you through it. Um, but if we open this up here, kind of like how it's got this clean white insert up here on the set power fridge, it doesn't have one of these rubber seals. So that's pretty sweet. Um, not trying to compare it to the set power fridge because they're different price points, but I just, You've seen that on the channel before, and so I'm trying to pull some parallels. But I think it's a 45 quart fridge. I'll toss it on the screen. And then it comes with this box here of stuff. Let's open up this box as well. I presume this just comes with the DC and the AC power cables. So, yep, got a little manual here. Here is the DC cable, and here is the AC cable. One thing I really like also about this fridge is they have the AC adapter built into the fridge, as far as I can tell. And on the set power fridge, you have to put the power adapter outside of it. So it's just nice. We got one cable here rather than a transformer with a block. But this is really nice. I like the build quality. We've got a light over here. You've got that light right at the top there. And then we've got these two white baskets on the inside. So. Sorry, this is a little bit harder to film because it is so big. So there we go. That's basically the fridge. Let's set that aside now and I'm gonna show you the cover and the slide that you can also get with it. These products can all be bought on their website. I will have everything linked down below, but here is the cover for it. So 
It's just got some different Velcro and zippers. It says Ice Co on it, just like that. We'll put it on the fridge to show you. What I really like is the inside has this reflective material, which I think is better insulation than just normal fabric. Um, I know that this is helpful, especially for keeping heat in, but I presume it's also nice for keeping cold in as well. This also feels really high quality and it's got a bit of padding to it, which I like as well. So not only is it gonna be insulating, but it's probably gonna provide some protection for your fridge. This is the slide. So it comes with these little straps and then we've got the slide itself. And all we're trying to do here is set the fridge on top of this. In the bottom, we've got a bunch of holes that we can use for mounting. I believe this is the same footprint as my set power slide. So we should be able to use the same holes that I put in my platform system for this. So uh, these slides are really sturdy. I was surprised by them. They don't use the standard locking mechanisms. They use this handle. So you lift up on the handle and it will pull forward like this. So, and it's got a middle point to lock right here. And then you can fully extend it all the way out to right, right there. You can hear that latch. So basically this, the whole entire drawer top can extend to the end of the drawer sliding like carcass or whatever you want to call it. So that's just a little preview there, but we'll mount this all up in the Forerunner and I'll kind of show you how I plan to lay it out. But let's set this slide aside and we're gonna put the cover on the fridge. So as I'm putting this in, I will list the dimensions for this fridge on the screen. Uh, but it's a pretty nice size fridge in my opinion. Um, if you're looking for different fridges for the Forerunner, I think this is a nice balance in size. It's not gonna take up too much space, but you've still got a fair amount of storage for all of your food. So it's also pretty cold here in Minnesota, so I presume this is a little less malleable than normal. There we go. That's really nice. I like the fitment. So on the cover here, we've got a little vent here for one of the cooling fans. On the one side, we've got this little pocket here to put some different things, cutouts for the handles themselves. And then if we spin this back around here, We've got this little screen, and I'm gonna be kind of careful with this in the winter here so that we don't crack it. Um, but this right here, we can press all these buttons through there, and then got access to our power ports. Another vent for that cooling fan, and another vent here for that cooling fan. So that is the fridge in the cover, and then if we bring the slide back, just like this, All you would do is, in the case of my setup, I want the little pouch to be facing forward. So we just go like that, set it in the slide, and then these little spots right up front here, we'll hook our straps through and then tie down to the handle. And that's how we can keep it anchored down nice. So set the fridge in there. And then we can lift this. There's little rubber feet in the back that prevent this from shaking or rattling when you're going down the road. So at the very beginning, you have to give a bit of a tug to pull it past that rubber, that rubber stopper. But there we go. That's the fridge. So we'll just set these up on top, set this aside and uh, we'll... All right, well, that's the Iceco fridge. I think that shows off the products pretty nicely. This is the view you would see looking into the Forerunner, and uh, we'll be able to go throw this in the rig, and I'll show you how it looks in the setup. All right, I apologize. It's kind of hard to like fit these items within frame, and I don't have a great backdrop right now for kind of reviewing this stuff, but the Rome 105 liter case is, I think, really unique because of the way that it hinges. So the bulk of cases are going to hinge from the side. You're gonna pull them this direction or vice versa. But I really like how these hinge because when you lift them up, they hinge this direction, which if you're pulling this on the slide out of the vehicle, this is all the space that is exposed. And I really like that. So it's easy to approach the case from any side, anywhere, and it's easy to get to this contents of this case. So the other reason I really like this particular case is 
Um, you know, there's, I've found little products and things along with this lid organizer that they sell to be able to stuff all kinds of things in here. Now I will say this setup is pretty new to me and I haven't dialed how I'm gonna organize this case. Uh, but I just will, kinda, I'll bring the camera over here and show you some of the inside and uh, I'll definitely start tucking things into all of these little pouches up on the lid as well. Uh, but I wanna show you what you can really do to maximize this space. So as you can see on the inside, I've got a couple of these little dividers and uh, I just bought these on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. They're really basic, they're five inches tall. So it allows you to organize a lot of things kind of on the lower layer and then you can lay stuff on the top. This takes up a fair amount of space, uh, but I'll fill that with water when I go on a trip. So that'll come and uh, get popped out of here. So uh, the other thing too is, is the lid is not super thick, but a little bit thick. And so this lid organizer kind of is, you know, fully encompassed in the lid. You don't really need to worry about it, you know, kind of protruding into this storage area here. So um, yeah, I just really like how this is set up a lot of you know bins or plastic totes from the store the lid doesn't stay connected so you always got to figure out what to do with it and then like a most of the other cases on the market they hold a, a pew pew of some kind and so they're not necessarily oriented for like camping storage or that sort of thing so i think this case could be kind of the perfect the perfect application for it so I'm really excited for this case. Uh, honestly, if you didn't want to use it for a kitchen and you wanted to use this for all your recovery gear or whatever and not run the Molly panel system, you totally could. Like this is a pretty universal setup. I'm just choosing to use it for storing all the food. Uh, but like I said, if you're more of a day trip person and you need sort of a setup back there to you know, keep some enjoyable beverages and your food for the day, like a sandwich you packed, and then you want your fridge. And then on the other side, you're just gonna carry all your recovery gear or something. This case is also a really nice size for that. You could totally fit a kinetic rope, some soft shackles, uh, a bunch of other little recovery gear pieces like some ratchet straps and whatnot for tying down something on your vehicle. Um, and you know, any other things like a first aid kit, you could keep that all in here if you wanted and not run a Molly panel system. You know, there's, there's different ways to configure this. And uh, I'm trying to make it as modular as possible so I can drop in different things if I want. If, if for some reason I want to take this case along but I don't need the fridge and I don't want to bring it along, pop out the four bolts, pull out the fridge. So it's very modular. Hopefully I can work with Rome in, a, in another capacity in the future. Uh, but I want to thank Forerunner Lifestyle for sponsoring this case, sending it to me because uh, I've really been looking for these and I was just about to pull the trigger on one and then uh, Forerunner Lifestyle and I decided to work together on this. So uh, I appreciate them supporting the channel. Uh, it helps me be able to continue to make these videos. So, all right, let's set this aside and I'm gonna show you how to actually mount this case up to the whole platform system. Another thing, not that it necessarily really matters, uh, but if you're someone who needs to have lockable storage, this case you could keep in your vehicle and you could lock it. I understand that it's basically tied down, non-locked, so maybe isn't that important, but it might prevent someone from messing with it. So, and this is how I plan to tie this down. So I haven't tied it down in the slide yet, uh, but basically these handles are removable if you want them to be, and you can pass a strap through here, which will come down and there's an anchor point right here in the slide. And so there's one of these little cut out sort of divot areas on both sides. There's this one between the hinge and then there's this one up here on the front. And so then you can tie this down to the slide and you shouldn't have any problems with it bouncing around. You've also got these tie down points on the sides, which should work well. Uh, but worst case scenario, if these don't work, I believe that Sherpa sells little brackets that you can pop in here that come down and then you can tie into something with uh, a couple of bolts. So if my fabric plan doesn't work, I'll look into using some of those Sherpa brackets. Okay, so I've pulled out the platform from the Forerunner. It had the set power slide on it, and now I'm putting the ice coast slide on. So the cool thing is, is I showed you this ice coast slide and the fridge for it already. What I didn't tell you about yet is the ice coast slide for their dual zone fridge fits a 105 liter Rome case perfectly. And that's the second component to this setup that's going to be so slick 
everything you can purchase off the shelf and outfit in every stage or whatever stage you want. So to remove my old slide was four bolts, just two in the front, two in the back. Now what I did is I laid these out, opened up the slide and then drew on the platform where I wanted to drill my holes. So I picked this hole, drew with some permanent marker on the carpet and now we're going to drill those holes so that we can put in a couple of these nuts with the teeth on them. I forget exactly what they're called. So we're gonna put these in. We'll be able to bolt this stuff up and then we'll reinstall it in the Forerunner. So super easy. If there's something else that you had in mind in your setup that you wanted to install at this point, you totally could. It's as simple as just installing these little nuts. So let's get into it. All right, so I got all of the nuts installed as you can see and they are countersunk i've used this little trick where i just use a half inch bit and barely dig out a little bit of the plywood works really well i show it in more detail in the platform build video but got all the mounting points in so we've got a bunch on the 40 percent side for the uh, different fridge slides and then also if i want to put the dual on that side and then We've got the dual set up on the other side as well. So now that those are all installed, we'll install the wood pieces back on the bottom and we're good to go. All right, so we got both slides mounted and everything. And uh, now just gotta put these two bolts up in the front and get this thing hooked back up inside of the rig so i'm going to just toss the case and the fridge on top here just to show you kind of how it looks like and then we'll throw it in the rig all right well there you have it check that out got there's a little bit of space in between that's okay there's the the roam case sitting on that slide and if we come over here this is another angle from the side here as you can see the ice co the fridge is slightly taller, you know, maybe five inches taller. I don't mind that. There's the back side. Remember, we've got this extra space back here. We'll probably put a battery of some kind. I'm gonna use the EcoFlow, but just for the sake of visualizing, uh, if you have the Blue Eddy EB150, let me go grab that and set it there since I've got it back from my buddy. All right, well, there you go. There's the Blue Eddy sitting right there. I think the Blue Eddy will fit behind the fridge with the seats up. So if you want that sort of setup, I would actually probably recommend the Blue Eddy, but the EcoFlow I have has more ports, has more storage, has the ability to be expanded, all kinds of things like that. So I prefer that one, but they each have their pros and cons here. So move these things. There's our two spots we got a bolt in here's another thing i just want to quick test out as you can see there i've got some uh these are i think uh tread traction boards and tread is uh, i think partnered with arb i don't quite remember uh, but these are the tread pro traction boards i've been testing them out used them on a random car one day in a snowstorm to get them off of the median so they they work well they do their job uh, these are kind of a specialer model, so these are supposed to be uh, really durable and not metal. And uh, these are kind of grippy. They're also directional. Anyway, I've been testing them out. A video will probably come out on them. But I just wanted to see what they looked like if I set them in between, and they do indeed fit. However, if they were dirty, I definitely wouldn't want to put them there. But if you're just carrying them around as a last minute resort, that might be a pretty sweet place to stack them. So this is the slide for the 105 liter. Basically these little loops at the end here, you can use to tie down to their handle. I think it'll work out really well how I'm planning to mount it up. So before I get into talking about the back storage setup, just kind of want to show what it looks like if you put the seats down or you could even have the seats up if you want, if you don't want to keep the traction boards in, uh, you can do both. But this is kind of, how the setup looks from the front. All right, let's jump to the back now and I'll, I'll talk through the system. All right, everybody. Well, I wanna show you around this platform space here. I'm pretty excited with how this layout turned out. I think it's gonna be a really awesome option for most of you out there who are using your rig more as a weekend vehicle. Um, so let's kind of jump in 
if you have watched my previous video, you saw how I built this wood platform here. It's got this little pull-out table. Uh, I really like this, and the more weight you add, the more sturdy this gets. So as you can see, this is pretty sturdy. Uh, probably could take, you know, 30-ish pounds and be just fine. Um, I'm not gonna test that because I just plan to do this for like gentle stuff. Uh, but one thing I will note is I have a full sound deadening kit in the Forerunner. It's a video I did a long time ago using uh, like Noiko or Noco sort of products. So in the middle of my trunk, it mounds a little bit because of how I applied that. Uh, which makes this wood platform sit just slightly non-level, which is why there's kind of a bit of a curve. Um, so just know that. I think if you were to follow kind of how I had built my wood platform in a normal trunk, it probably would be level. So I'll kind of just give a little walk around here of the back of the vehicles. All right, so on the left here, we've got the Iceco VL45 with its proprietary slide and its cover. I really like this Iceco fridge. I think it is uh, a nice size for forerunners because the trunk is not quite as big as like your typical like suburban or larger SUV. So I think it's like the perfect size. It isn't a dual zone, but I've found that the dual zone can sometimes be not that necessary if you're just going on weekend trips. It is a nice feature to have, just know that it'll be a trade-off of space. Uh, but this has been a really nice size I've found. Uh, then in the middle here, we are running some Tread Pro uh, traction boards. These are pretty nice. I've used them probably four or five times, um, only on other people's rigs <laughs> or just vehicles. Uh, you know, a couple people in Target that I've seen with two-wheel drive cars are getting stuck. We've been getting a lot of snow here in Minnesota this winter. So I've been keeping those in between here and just, uh, you know, as a backup. And then I don't need to keep them on my trunk where they might get full of ice or snow. I'm just riding up there all day long. So also with the 4Runner being on 35s and as tall as it is, I barely fit in 7-foot garages and uh, parking ramps. So I'm just trying to stay under that clearance so that I can still go most places with the 4Runner. On the right side here, I believe this is the VL60, uh, but it's basically the dual zone version of the Iceco fridge. I've got a Rome 105 liter case on it with uh, a whole organization system inside it. So showed you a little bit of that earlier in the video, uh, but that goes right here. Just kind of demonstrate, I guess, pulling them out. So this comes all the way out here. Here's kind of the end of the tailgate, so you can almost walk up to the very end of this box. Um, so the slide comes out really a long ways. If we pop this open, it's on gas struts. This whole top is gonna uh, be good space for organizing. And then I've got a bunch of things inside of here as well. I'm kind of treating this like my kitchen with different foods so I can grab it, take it in the house, bring it back out. And it's really easy to pack for a weekend trip. Push that in and then over here, like I was saying, is my fridge. And likewise, it comes out about the same amount. Uh, so I like these two slides. The big reason I decided to go with a design like this is uh, all these products are off the shelf. So it makes it easier for people to kind of gain inspiration and use it for their setup. Because uh, if I just go and build something completely from scratch, it's really cool, but uh, it might not necessarily be as relatable. And so with a setup like this, all this stuff is you know, fairly economical, relatively speaking. And then uh, most of it can be purchased, which is really nice if you're trying to go and buy all the stuff and set it up in your vehicle. So how I like to think about it is kind of like prep surface, your kitchen storage, cold refrigerated storage, traction boards. And then up above here is kind of everything else. So I've got a, a fire extinguisher, I've got straps, I've got ratchet straps, I've got toe straps, I've got a little uh, silky saw, and then I've got my big splitting axe up above on top of here. On this right side, I've got some medic uh, different gear as well as just a little magnetic uh, light. And then up top here, I've got a bunch of extra stuff. I've got a big socket set, a torque wrench, a bunch of uh, impact drill sockets, like those black ones that you use for automotive purposes for high torque. Uh, I've got two sleeping bags, sleeping pads, a hammock, uh, a down vest, some winter gloves, uh, a smaller hatchet. I've got Otis's uh, chuck it, my inflate deflate four wheel tire system, and then also a set of jumper cables and a jumper battery pack. And uh, probably the only thing that I'm missing from up here is I've got a power drill that I'll keep in the vehicle. Um, 
I also think I might even mount right up here a single battery charger for uh, basically like a 12 or 24 volt drill. It's probably one of those uh, Hercules drills I'm gonna keep in the rig at all times in case I need to use it on the road. So kind of rattling all those things off, um, probably the biggest thing for storage is this Molly panel system. It's just insane how much I can store. And if I pulled all of this stuff out, uh, there's so much good gear that I carry with me all the time. Like, uh, you know, first aid kit gear, recovery gear, and just stuff to keep me warm in the winter, worst case scenario, if I break down or something. Uh, but this platform is super awesome. You kind of saw earlier in the video, but each one of these slides, it's only four bolts and you can pop the whole thing out. So if I want to take a solo trip, I can pop out my kitchen setup here uh, and just pack my kitchen stuff in a different bin. Or if I'm going to be running a rooftop tent setup, you know, I can leave it in, pull it out, whatever. Uh, I do like to sleep in the vehicle at times. So I really wanted to have a setup where I could run a fridge in a, in a place to sleep inside or I could run both of these with you know, a different sleeping setup like a tent on the roof. So if some of you remember, I'm working on a DIY tent that's still in the works. I've just been slowly clicking along on that project as well. So always got projects in the mix. Um, but yeah, this is the bulk of the setup. And uh, if you like what I'm doing with the channel or you like this sort of setup and you got questions, you know, feel free to like the video, comment below any questions, that sort of thing. because. I'm happy to try and answer anything or any questions you might have or bounce any ideas off me. But with that being said, uh, that's going to be the rest of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.